Uh, I'm Michelle Kittleson. I'm a heart failure transplant cardiologist and professor of medicine at the Smith Heart Institute at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles. So cardiac amyloidosis, of course, is this condition where there's an abnormal protein that infiltrates into the heart muscle, causing the heart to become stiffer than normal and leading to symptoms. And the most important symptom that we, uh, the most important unmet need is the underdiagnosis or the under recognition of the condition. And it's so important to have a high index of suspicion because it's not something you'll necessarily uncover on routine testing. So if there is a patient, not necessarily even with heart failure symptoms, but fatigue, some dyspnea, atrial fibrillation, increased left ventricular wall thickness, accompanied with other findings such as lumbar spinal stenosis, carpal tunnel syndrome, autonomic neuropathy with orthostatic hypotension, sensory peripheral neuropathy, consider the evaluation and testing for cardiac amyloidosis. So the most important role of the cardiologist is number one, to have a high index of suspicion in the face of these clinical clues, and number two, to order the right tests to get at the diagnosis. The two most common forms of cardiac amyloidosis are AL, caused by light chains, and ATTR, caused by the transthyretin protein. While they carry the same name and have similar presentations, the treatments are dramatically different. The prognosis is dramatically different. And to mistake one for the other is a medical catastrophe. So the test that must be ordered to get the right diagnosis, number one, a monoclonal protein screen. And that monoclonal protein screen must include serum and urim immunofixation electrophoresis, Protein electrophoresis, SPEP, EPEP, is not enough. It must be immunofixation electrophoresis to be truly sensitive and serum kappa lambda light chains. If the monoclonal protein screen co constituting the serum IFE, urine IFE, or serum kappa lambda light chains is abnormal, the next step is to talk to a hematologist about the interpretation and need for a biopsy. If, however, that screen is negative, then and only then may you interpret your bone scintigraphy, your technetium pyrophosphate scan to diagnose TTR amyloidosis non-invasively. This is a major pitfall because if you order a technetium scan in the absence of a monoclonal protein screen, you may get a false positive scan that's actually AL amyloidosis and miss a life threatening diagnosis. So those three tests, the monoclonal protein screen, serum urine IFE, serum kappa lambda, in, and then interpreting your technetium scan in the context of your monoclonal protein screen is essential. So that's the first very important role in diagnosis. The second important role of the cardiologist is initiation of appropriate therapies. Now, if there's AL amyloidosis, you will collaborate with your hematologist on plasma cell-directed therapies. If it's TTR, then tafamidus is the best we've got, FDA-approved, proven in the ATTR ACT trial to reduce mortality with a 13% absolute risk reduction in 30 months and reduce heart failure hospitalizations. Now, you also asked me about the role of other specialists. Amyloidosis is a systemic disease. As I mentioned, it can cause an autonomic neuropathy with orthostatic hypotension. It can cause peripheral neuropathy. It can cause gastrointestinal involvement, not just through the autonomic dysfunction, but also through malabsorption. There can be issues with pleural effusions. There can be musculoskeletal orthopedic issues like spinal stenosis, carpal tunnel syndrome, and therefore it's very important to partner with other specialists on symptom management in these other areas. So we're very proud of the ACC Expert Consensus Decision Pathway document, of which I was honored to be the chair on the comprehensive care of patients with cardiac amyloidosis. And number one, high index of suspicion in the face of clinical clues. Number two, right, order the right test to make the right diagnosis. Number three, when it comes to therapies, don't just think about the heart, but think about how you can collaborate with specialists in other fields, including gastroenterology, neurology, nephrology, hematology, orthopedics, pain, rehabilitation, genetics, to, to give your patient the best comprehensive care, not only to help them live longer and stay out of the hospital, but also maximize their quality of life and functional status.
So the one challenge which I've already um, emphasized so much, but, does, but bears further emphasis, is the under-recognition of the condition. We really are at the tip of our, the iceberg in our understanding of how many patients are truly living with cardiac amyloidosis. Number two, making the right diagnosis by ordering the right tests and interpreting them correctly. And number three is there's so much unknown out there. We know tefamidus as a TTR stabilizer can help keep patients out of the hospital and live longer, works much better when started earlier in the disease course. It doesn't reverse the process, it prevents progression. We know there are also the silencers out there that inhibit the formation of the TTR protein from the mRNA transcripts. Those are now FDA approved for the variant form of neuropathy being tested in cardiomyopathy. Early results are promising, but we don't know yet. Will the standard of care be a stabilizer plus minus a silencer, one or the other? Will one work better in one condition than another? And also there's this very exciting CRISPR-Cas technology of gene editing, not ready for prime time, but some early signals of promise down the road. So I think we're in a very exciting time of understanding how to diagnose it and having emerging therapies to help our patients.